Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, dealing with rare disease is uh, uh, something that I started about 18 months ago coming from large pharma. And in large pharma we were mostly uh, dealing with large diseases with very defined target. Um, it's been a, a learning curve. I liked the, uh, the idea that you expressed at the beginning that we are building the plane as we are flying. It's very much representing what we are going through. Um, working with rare diseases presents a number of challenges, a number of scientific challenges, a number of regulatory challenges, a, and a number of a, um, manufacturing challenges once the drug, uh, or while we are producing the drug. And I'm going to try to uh, share with you some of the challenges we've been going through and maybe um, um, share some ideas about how to avoid them or how to consider them. So, Condrial, and just as a disclaimer, I don't receive anything from Jax, it just happened that the formatting put Jax logo at the bottom. It should be actually a Condrial logo. Um, although, if you, if you want me to... We're really just that close now. Yeah. Um, so, Condrial has been uh, incorporated many years ago based on the technology issue that of Indiana University discovered by Dr. Payne. Um, and uh, we are working on the condition as Katz mentioned, which is called Friedrich Ataxia. Friedrich Ataxia is a, a fairly common, if we can use the, fair, this, the word fairly for rare disease, but among rare disease it's a fairly common disease, is, disease and uh, it's affecting the mitochondrial uh, functioning in the cells, which is like the, the, um, the energy um, producing organelle in the cell. Uh, the population is uh, mostly of Swedish descent, although there are uh, a population that there is a population that has been characterized in India, but mostly patient can be found in the U.S., uh, Canada, in Europe, and uh, uh, Australia. Um, like most mitochondrial diseases, the symptom includes uh, uh, ataxia, cardiomyopathy, uh, peripheral organs uh, uh, failure. It's interesting that the patient will first be diagnosed or will present at, uh, at the doctor because of problem of coordination, problem playing uh, a sport, um, and um, they, will, um, they will go through a number of tests. One of the tests will reveal that they already have a cardiomyopathy, and from then on, it is a, a, a waiting game, and it's a, a try of beating, trying to beating the disease in the hope that a cure will come before the, the disease evolved too far. Um, the symptoms are usually s uh, found in childhood and um, the outcome is uh, most of the time fatal or with a heart failure in the third to fifth decade. It's interesting that there is a big heterogeneity between the patients. Like the, the patient's population presents a big heterogeneity of the disease. And I'm going to show you a small video um, that I wanted to insert because as has been mentioned by two people before, rare disease is really uh, an individual uh, focus. It's, it's really looking at the patients, trying to understand what they're going through, um, their reality, and see what could be improved or not improved. It's obvious if somebody is coming with a heart that is failing, that you're not going to reverse that. But by listening to what is really bothering the patient, you can then make a very significant uh, improvement in the quality of life that will eventually result in approval and then f once the drug is approved we can consider working backward and going earlier and earlier and even starting to suggest to the FDA doing pre prenatal diagnosis which the FDA will not accept if there is no drug um, um, available. So I want to share with you a little a movie. It's a se sequel of, um, of a movie done by uh, the Friedrich Ataxia Research Alliance, which we're going to be mentioning a little later. Um, this movie is amazing. It's called The Ataxia. And if you, if you have the time and if you can find it online, I really highly recommend to watch it. It's a 45-minute uh, um, movie that has been uh, produced, sponsored and produced by the Frederick Atsasia Research Alliance. High quality, very impactful. And one of the patients in the movie was a kid at the time who was six years old. The little video that I'm going to show you now 
is showing this kid like six years later and how the disease progress and it's actually very moving but also very informative about what um, patients are going through and what can be addressed. Seven years have passed since the filming of the ataxian, and Dylan is now not able to get out of his chair and walk anymore. He has had scoliosis surgery, and he also has developed diabetes. He wears an insulin pump, and just recently, automatic blood glucose monitor. He's more dependent on us and for pretty much everything. He has trouble eating independently now. His dexterity makes that pretty hard for him, but he still has his personality and his huge heart that hasn't changed. <laughs> Sienna is 10 years old now. She'll be 11 next month, and she really shows no, no symptoms at all in that phase. She's extremely active, she loves softball, she ice skates, she rides a bike, she does pretty much anything she can to be moving all of the time and uh, we encourage that because the more, more she can do now, the longer she's going to be able to do it. My first memory was when Dylan could still walk, we'd always hang out, and then when he got into a wheelchair, he just was really mad. Sometimes I'll think like, what's going to happen when I'm in a wheelchair? I'm going to have to put all my hobbies, I'm going to have to put all my sports, that worries me. If you can get a treatment in place that stops or slows the progression of that thing and then just let let them be where they're at and let science catch up in other areas to start helping undo the damage and repair the damage. I would be happy with that. I want your kid to be happy. Thankful for when the day is a good day and hopeful that tomorrow will be better. So, I am um, really a focus on patients, understanding what they're going through. Um, I remember your first name, Jules, uh, uh, mentioned before that a incremental improvement in everyday tasks, in quality of life, can be important. Um, and th you've seen there's a lot of aspects of life that can be affected. So how are we trying to address that? Conrear Therapeutic was incorporated in 2012 um, and um, to develop a protein replacement technology. Basically, we are trying to replace a missing protein by providing it um, outside the body uh, as a fusion with what is called a cell penetrant peptide. In 2016, we had, a, a, um, this is when I joined, um, a trench series A uh, financing of 22.6 million by a, a, a venture in New York called Deerfield Management. The relationship with the venture is extremely important. There needs to be a total transparency, a total trust, and, and, uh, and this, this way we can actually expect them to understand that science can be delayed sometimes and, and can take more time or more money. The current focus is to treat Frederick Atatia. We are also looking to apply our uh, increasing knowledge to other, uh, um, to other conditions. We had quarter in Balaken Woods, and very importantly, we have two centers of scientific activity where we can provide our own data, check uh, um, the reality of the, of the um, uh, information given by our providers. One is, the, is, one is at the Science Center in Philadelphia, that, uh, where I live, and uh, the other one is at Indiana University under the direction of Dr. Payne. It's important to have something independent from a university because of IP problem and also because of conflict of interest otherwise. Um, so the, the, the company uh, is, as, as I mentioned, is uh, developing this uh, technology 
and developing a technology necessitated a lot of IND enabling activity, basically bringing us to a state where we feel we will feel comfortable and that we feel that we will be successful to approach the FDA. And if we needed to summarize it in, in, um, in two words, we could say that what the FDA needs to know is what type of initial doses we're going to be applying to, what, to the po patient population and what type of uh, therapeutic index which is related to the toxicity can we expect in this patient. And as Joe said before, everything else is, needs to be sound science supported by data and true understanding and no bluff because those people have been seeing bluff for many years and they can smell it and also it will uh, play against uh, um, the patient eventually. There's a lot of activity, I'm going to just uh, uh, focus on the, the importance of pharmacology um, uh, but also of, of the central role of provide, uh, producing a very, a very pure and very characterized drug. And, um, the, all those activity are being done at Condrion by a team which um, has been uh, increasing over the, the past 18 months, led by Carol Van Maimon. She's the president and CEO. Carol, uh, for the little story, is a person at Steva Pharmaceutical that uh, um, championed Copaxon, a, um, a regulatory approval by the FDA. Um, and she put a, a team that is a complete of people that have uh, been working in the pharma industry either in discovery, in finance, in regulatory, um, or in clinical operation. Again, central is the ability to provide our own uh, reality testing or checking on all the data that we receive. Uh, also, based on all the, the activity here, it is very important to uh, have an integration of all the data that are coming, making sure that they reach the right place and that the right decisions are being made so that the project doesn't stall at some points and we can keep on going without running out of capital very rapidly. Um, so we are not working alone or in, a, in, a, in isolation. We are working with collaborators, partners and consultants and um, I uh, dividing them maybe uh, uh, artificially into four boxes. Uh, missing here probably would be um, a clinical um, uh, research organization and uh, like PRA, I know that we're going to have uh, Scott talking later on. And those organizations are very valuable to kind of uh, uh, to, to help having a. a a vision of what will be needed for the clinical successful clinical development, but in the meantime, the the, the central box here um, um, is meant to represent people generating data. So we have the Jackson Laboratory. I'm going to be talking about that a little more. Farah, the Frederick Ataxa Research Alliances, they provided a very comprehensive natural history for Frederick Ataxia, which is essential for us to be able to not only design the pharmacology that we are doing, but also to uh, uh, prepare for clinical study in terms of biomarker and pharmacodynamic. And they are also very close, in very close relationship with the patient and are able to either uh, generate enthusiasm in the community very rapidly um, or to put us in contact directly with patients. We're also working with the NIH with the Center for um, uh, Rare Disease uh, it's called Trends under grants, um, collaboration grants. They've been very helpful. They were, they were able to, to a, um, a, um, tap into resources that we don't have otherwise. They don't give us any money, they just give us in, uh, um, um, in kind um, support. Um, there is also a, a little, um, a, um, how would I say that, a caveat working with them in the sense that they are a government organization so the time scale is not the same and the focus sometimes might not be the same. So this is something that needs to be managed. Uh, we are also supported by a, a bunch of very um, a, uh, qualified consultants either for the CMC, for the uh, pharmacology, for the regulatory or also for um, any aspect of compliance 
and, and transparency. Again, uh, to echo something that was said before, we need to be totally transparent to the, to the FDA. So, and I'm going to try to go through that very rapidly. Um, there are developability challenges that are specific to rare disease-oriented projects. Um, mutated protein might not have an, an obvious function or might not be acceptable easily. There might be a lot of correlation or a lot of understanding between the molecular uh, defect and the pathology. And all that will make it very difficult to produce data that will convince the FDA that yes, we are addressing the pathology, we are addressing the mechanisms that are responsible uh, for the pathology. There's a lack of cellular model that can be relied upon and uh, the alternative or the engineering might not be entirely satis uh, satisfactory, so this needs to be considered. And the animal mo model might not be also available. Also, although Jack, Jack's uh, is a very, very good resource, um, the biomarker and PD for pharmacodynamic strategy needs to be uh, very seriously considered and uh, and um, and, um, and uh, prepared uh, ahead of uh, any submission. Um, working with Jax, I don't call them a um, collaborate. I don't call them like CRO. I call them collaborators. Um, they demonstrated the absolute expertise in in the field of the uh, Frederick Taxia as far as the mouse model was concerned, and as far as I'm not. A, um, um, not taking for granted the, um, the differences between uh, a model and the actual um, patient. They are highly qualified, extremely a, um, a, um, a um, how would I say that? Without losing more time, extremely enthusiastic scientists. It's very, it's a pleasure to work with them. This is very important because a. Um, there's no time to lose in, in, um, in uh, drafting contracts. There's no time to lose in trying to, uh, to work out the IP. And everything is very straightforward working with, with this organization. In general terms, um, what is needed to work on a, on a rare disease at, at the biotech level is working with people that are extremely flexible and highly qualified in delivering the information that, that are needed. I'm just going to give you um, two more slides, like to give example of the type of data. This is based on the, on the um, characterization of a model for Frederick Ataxia. And you can see that um, Jax was able to actually assess cardiac uh, function in the mice um, in a manner that showed that the, 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 um, the defect, the cardiac defect in the mice, actually parallel the one that were observed in patients. But also at an enzymatic level, they were able to show that the enzymology was uh, um, the way it was expected to be in the absence of rifaxin. Um, just to illustrate, and I will be uh, uh, happy to um, discuss additional points uh, outside the, this presentation, just to illustrate again the extreme flexibility, we asked them at some point to do a, a sample collection optimization that we needed urgently. We initiated a discussion on July 28th last year and on August 29th we had the data on a fairly uh, complex study. So uh, again, um, w being able to work with uh, uh, CROs or collaborators that are extremely flexible is key to be able to progress a, a, a project on the, a rare disease um, effectively. So um, thank you again. Thank you.